Hello everyone and welcome back to another video at Mobile Must Have. Now in, in today's video we are using the BR1 um, MK2 PEP Wave, but most of what we're going to show today is relevant to all PEP Wave units. So you, you don't have this exact one, uh, you should be able to follow along just fine. Uh, in today's video we are going to get you from basically getting it out of the box to connecting to the internet. Uh, we're going to try and keep it short, but make sure you have all the information at the same time. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to first um, install the SIM, uh, showing you how the SIM installation works. Then we're going to um, talk about power and installing power. Um, then once you figure out power, then we'll do antennas and show you how to get online. Should be fun. All right, let's get to it. All right, everyone. Now, so the first step is we're going to take the unit out of the box. Um, and yours might be in a plastic bag, so I'll remove that. And then we're going to work on our SIM cards. Uh, the first thing we need to do is remove um, the dust cover that's kind of just protecting every from dust getting in. And you just need a simple, uh, small kind of Phillips head screwdriver. All right, now that the dust cover is removed off the SIM slots, you'll see two slots, and there's even directions kind of on the orientation of the slot, uh, which we'll hit in a second. If your card came in a, uh, a full sheet like this, we're going to need to punch it out. So just be careful to, uh, to not break it or break the card. You need it to come out in this full size. Um, there's two dreams. This could be a standard or a 2FF size. Uh, and this is what the PEP Wave needs. Now, in some cases, you might have a smaller SIM card if you're moving from like a... a a Verizon jetpack or something like that, you may need to buy a, a small kind of SIM adapter um, and this will allow it to go back into the pep wave. Make sure you use only full size SIMs to get them uh, into the pep wave. Anything smaller will get lost and uh, it will break it. So we need a full size SIM. Uh, just make sure it's oriented the same way as the pictures on the bottom. So this would be B, this is A. Um, and the metal pieces on one side of the SIM always need to face the other slot. So the top slot would be metal down, bottom slot metal up. Um, now when you push these in, um, they, they should fit pretty snug, but they shouldn't. you shouldn't have to force it in. If you're forcing it, you might have it oriented the wrong way, so double check your orientation. Um, and then you should be able to just kind of push it in and you'll hear it click. Don't push any further than that. Um, and that allows it actually to kind of get it in and out easily. So if you wanted to get it out, you can push in again, and then the card will kind of push itself out so it's really easy to hold on to. I have found that sometimes the, that kind of push mechanism is already pushed in. Um, so if you don't hear it click, don't overforce it. Um, sometimes if it's in already, you can just push again and you'll feel it. And So you'll know when it's in, you'll know when it's out, you can kind of, you'll feel that. Basically, though, this is how far it should be faced when it's in. This is all the way in. There, It will still stick out a bit. Now, if you're putting the SIM on the bottom because you have a second SIM, that's fine. Just make sure the metal is side up, and then you can push it in. Again, listen for the click, and then you can push back, and it'll, it'll come back to you. So, all right, we're going to leave ours on the top. We heard the click. Now we can replace our dust cover. All right, now let's not talk about power. And I'm gonna do power next because it's just easier to work with the box before we put the antennas on it. You have two options for power. The first is your standard AC power. The AC power cord will come in the box. It's a standard kind of 110 um, plug with, with a power unit that will go in the back. Your other option, which you might have to order optionally, would be a DC power cable. This would go directly onto a battery or any other kind of 12 volt source you might have in your RV, you could probably hotwire it into like a light switch um, or any other maybe 12 volt wiring you have nearby where you're going to install this main unit. Uh, we're not gonna go over the actual install today, but you will see on this pack, there are two cables that are actually finally finished. You have a, a true you know, end kind of connection on those. These are the sides that are gonna go into the PEP wave. On the back here, you have a green kind of connector. This will come out, um, so you can connect the wires with this and then push it in. Um, that's probably what we'll do today. But once you remove this, you'll see there are four kind of holes. You'll see a minus two options and then a plus. That is where the uh, cable will go. So I'll just show you how to install this real quick. So the minus is the black. That is going all the way on this side. Uh, basically, you're gonna push that piece all the way in. 
And then you're going to need a tiny screwdriver to close and actually screw in this top part. All right, there. And, it, and it's a small one, so it's like the size of like a sunglass kind of kind of flathead or something like that. But once you push that wire in, you can tighten down that screw. And you can make sure that's held tight. So obviously we need to go some more. All right, and then give it a pull. And if it doesn't come out, you're all set. And we'll put the positive in on the other side. There, so now that they're attached, you can push this part in, and then this would allow DC to go to the unit. Um, it doesn't really matter from a preference angle. It's more of just kind of your setup. I like having it on DC. That way, during a drive day, and when I'm not on shore power, uh, the unit is getting basically power directly from the battery. It's much more energy efficient that way, and I just think you get a lot more use out of it than when you uh, have to run a generator or an inverter to just invert back into DC anyways. Um, but I understand also it's a little bit extra of a step. All right, so now that we have our power sorted and where you're going to plug it in, the next is going to be antennas. Now this is where your unit might show different antennas. Um, this one in particular has five antennas. Some have three, four, seven. There, there's different variables here. Uh, but all of them will still operate the same way. The antennas, all of the antennas are really important to connect even if you're not going to use that service. Uh, it just, it helps with interference and other things. Um, now, so for example, these thin antennas in, in this current one are for the Wi-Fi. This is what's going to pick up Wi-Fi around you and allow it to be received into the PepWave unit itself. And then these bigger fan ones are for uh, receiving the cell phone signal. If you look on the unit itself, it will tell you where these are gonna go. So we have a Wi-Fi antenna up here, A and B on this side. And then on this side, we have a cellular, a GPS, and another cellular antenna. Uh, again, yours might be different. I know I actually have installed behind the TV a mini unit, and I only have antennas on the top of the unit. And I think there's like one cellular, one Wi-Fi, and something else. So, uh, so just check your unit. It'll tell you which way they go in. Also, on this particular unit, I can't install the, let's say, the cell phone on the Wi-Fi. It just doesn't fit. So if they don't fit, double check that it doesn't need to go somewhere else. All right, so I said the big fat ones are on the cell phone side. So we'll be gentle screwing these in. You want to push them in until they kind of stop turning and then just make sure they're snug. Don't go any more than that. And we'll do the same thing for this side, snug and then tight. And then you can fold these up and fold them so they face kind of over the uh, the front of the logo itself because you're going to mount it on the other side. All right, so now we have our two uh, Wi-Fi antennas. There's A and B, again tight, we'll face it upwards. Now this unit does come with a GPS antenna. Um, this one ideally this antenna here, you would ideally run up to some point on your roof or on the exterior of the RV and has a pretty long cable that then can attach directly into the unit of the pep wave itself. Uh, this will actually tell you where your unit is. So as long as your unit has power, which again is great if you're on DC, um, and the unit is, uh, well, you'd be able to look up where the unit is. Now that's all part of the section we'll get to later, but that's where this antenna is. This is the only, in my opinion, optional antenna. Um, I haven't had one installed on ours just yet, but all the other antennas are very important to put on uh, because they each have a purpose um, for the unit. So make sure you install all the antennas. Okay, well really at this point we are, um, we're ready to mount it and install it. Now I'm not going to do this, and this is not an install video, this is just more of a setup. So at this point go and mount this where you're going to have yours and then provide power and we'll meet you back here. All right, so now I'm gonna show you what the power-up cycle looks like. I have just plugged ours in, and with that, we're gonna get a red status uh, appearing first. This is it in its boot cycle, it's totally fine. We're gonna wait for all three lights to turn green. Now that we have all three lights on the status, the Wi-Fi, and the cellular, we know the unit is fully booted. Now we're going to take a device and connect it to the Wi-Fi the PEP wave is creating. The next step is to grab a device and you need to have one that connects to Wi-Fi and has a browser, and we're gonna look for the Wi-Fi signal. To find the name of the Wi-Fi unit, flip the, the pep wave to the back, and you're gonna see on the second line the serial number. The last four of the serial number is going to be the, the Wi-Fi name. 
So it's going to say pep wave, and mine says CF, I'm sorry, 6FC4. Yours will say a different code, but along the same, you'll see pep wave and then that number or code. So here mine is on our Wi Fi network on our device. I'm going to tap that and I'm presented with a password. The password can also be found on the bottom of your pep wave. In this case, it says AP password, but it also will be the last eight of the MAC address. So we'll type this in. You hit join up at the top and you'll see kind of that circle spinning and now that we're connected. And that's really it. That's all you have to do. Now, if you would like one of these units set up and configured for you, uh, we do offer that service. There is an email in the description below and I'll, I'll put it right here. If you email us, we can offer that service to you for a fee. Uh, but at this point, you're connected and you're ready to go. If you wanted to change the name of the Wi-Fi or change the password, you can do all of that. Um, the easiest thing to do is just to open a browser, go to the following address, 192.168.50.1, let's see that on the top, uh, and this will bring you to the kind of the back end PepWave system. The username is admin, the password is admin and you are all logged in. From here you can make any changes that you want. Again, if you want anything configured by us or if you need assistance at this level, you can email us below. We offer a service to help you get anything else you need set up at this point. Thank you so much for joining us on the video today on how to set up your PepWave and we will see you in the next video. Bye!